At least 11 people have been killed and 24 homes destroyed in Morocco after torrential downpours hit North Africa's normally arid mountains and deserts over the weekend. Families in Warzazat waded through floodwaters with their belongings, carrying children and helping the elderly to get to higher ground. Officials said the two days of storm surpassed historic averages, in some cases exceeding the annual average rainfall. The downpours affected some of the same regions that experienced a deadly earthquake one year ago. Footage from Morocco's Ministry of Interior showed rescue crews working on a collapsed building. Nine people have been reported missing, with drinking water and electrical infrastructure damaged, along with major roads. Rashid El Kalfi, Morocco's Interior Ministry spokesperson, said in a statement on Sunday that the government was working to restore communications and access to flooded regions in the exceptional situation and urged people to use caution. During the Kursk operation, Ukrainian forces captured over 600 Russian soldiers. The captives include conscripts, mobilized personnel and contract soldiers from the Russian armed forces. Conditions for holding Russian soldiers in Ukraine and their views on the war and Putin were explored by military correspondent Bordana Lyaskivska of RBC Ukraine. More than 600 military personnel are already in captivity. There are officers, Chechens and Kadyrov's militant among them. We will exchange all of them for our guys. This is also one of the objectives of this operation and it justifies itself. President Volodymyr Zelensky said, commenting to Western media on the Ukrainian armed forces operation in the Kursk region. RBC Ukraine journalists were able to speak with some of these captives. The captives themselves are surprised by the conditions and treatment. We were told it was better to greet with a grenade than to be taken captive, but here everything is quite different, says one of the Russian soldiers. 
one captive is only 20 years old. He says he joined the army to get an amnesty and was indifferent to the so-called special military operation. Now on camera, he admits that Russia did attack Ukraine and does not understand the purpose of it. When asked how to stop it, he shrugs and says, it's all politics and Putin. We understand it's bad, but we can't do anything about it. He says somewhat bewilderedly. This young man, along with other Russian soldiers, was captured on August the 18th. They found themselves completely surrounded and surrendered without a fight when the Ukrainian forces approached. They say they were treated very well, not even bound, and were immediately given food and cigarettes. This young man has only known Putin as the leader of Russia, given his age. When asked if he considers this normal, he admits he doesn't know if the dictatorship will ever end. Most don't even go to the elections because it will still be Putin says the Russian soldier. Many captives assert that they do not need Ukrainian land. They have plenty of Russian territory and are willing to leave Ukrainian land, but are unsure how to make that happen, as all Russian militants will not lay down their arms or leave the state border. If someone does, a new batch of soldiers will be sent in their place. Although the captives speak as if in touch with reality, the guards claim that their words should not be taken at face value. Since they are in special conditions, they might say anything. However, they are not actually threatened here, unlike Ukrainian captives on the other side of the border. A logical question arises from the captives. Do they know the conditions Ukrainian prisoners are held in? They say that although the TV shows them in good condition, they know about the torture.